Okay, my friends, let's do this. Uh, welcome back to Guitar Quackery, where we use scientifically proven methods to fix, build, and study guitars. Sorry. A guitar Quackery? Hey, Jim. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on your guitar as we speak, yeah. Okay, be patient, okay? Bye, call you, bye. Well, uh, I have a guitar here from uh, my friend Jim Satin. Okay, Jim Satin is a uh, guitar player, established guitar player. Uh, he was the uh, band leader in the 1980s and 90s for Bo Diddley, Bo Diddley's uh, guitar player, lead guitar player. Um, played with a bunch of people, Chuck Berry, Ronnie Wood, Mick Taylor, I don't know. We'll ask him. We'll have him on the show, right? So, um, why don't we start with our Chinese proverb of the day. So there's an old Chinese proverb that says, if you have an acoustic electric guitar that has no output signal, check the battery first. Uh -huh. So um, I have at least one person every week come to my shop with a, an acoustic electric that has no output signal. Nine and a half times out of 10, they don't even know that there's a battery inside the guitar. So I wanna save you some money. You don't need to pay a repair tech. Just check if there's a battery in your guitar. Some other guitars and basses have batteries as well. And change it, right? And now that you've saved so much money, uh, maybe you can toss some of those savings my way. There's links in my description below. Uh, one is to buy me a coffee and the other one is to become a patron. Thank you very much. So, uh, let's have a look at this guitar. Hmm. It's a uh, Martin guitar and Jim says that he gets no output signal. So I did already uh, check everything and I know what is wrong, but um, let me show you what is happening. So um, first let's put the battery inside. Now I've already removed the strings from this guitar so we won't be able to play just yet. But uh, when I put a fresh battery, I, I get output signal. The guitar does play. But um, do you see what's happening here? All right, so let's talk about that. Acoustic electric guitars have an output jack that has a built-in switch. So when you plug it in, it turns on the circuit. So when the guitar is unplugged, you're not supposed to see any blinking lights. And if you keep your guitar plugged in overnight or you know for days and days, uh, your battery will drain faster because you have uh, a closed circuit that is draining a battery. And what is happening here, as you've seen, we have some activity and it's not supposed to be happening. So I suspect that there's something wrong with the circuit, not a bad battery. So why is Jim telling me that he gets no output signal? Well, he, he puts the battery in and the guitar works and then it stops working after a few days. Well, that's because this uh, circuit drains the battery completely. So let's have a look. Now, uh, we wanna remove this battery. And I've already removed some screws so, um, so we can now remove this entire pre-amplifier very quickly. And this is an old Fishman pre-amplifier 
it's usually held by six screws. I removed four of them. And as you can see, we can pull it out. Now, because it's an older model, um, these connections are soldered, so we cannot unplug it. It's not as convenient to, to work on this. Um, but here's something that we don't like to see when we open it up, this uh, green stain. So this um, is an indication that at some point a battery leaked. All right, so um, I want to show you a real close up of uh, what is going on in here. And we are going to just use our microscope here to do this. Okay, so here we go. So here we have a um, situation. We see a lot of corrosion on, on the uh, IC, uh, that's the uh, microchip, okay? So I would imagine that this corrosion is somehow shorting out uh, parts of the circuit. And here uh, inside, I can see some more corrosion right there, right? So we don't know how it's uh, affecting the circuit, but we know that it's not there by design. So next thing we need to do is we need to disassemble this entire uh, circuit board, remove it as much as we uh, can, and then work on it. So uh, I've already removed some screws, so I only have two screws left to remove. All right. Uh, so this we have some shielding here, but the wires are soldered. So. Um, it's not very convenient to work on this. We cannot just unplug uh, the circuit board. Now we need to remove uh, this part. So let's take these uh, knobs off. You need a 10 millimeter socket wrench to loosen these. And we also have to remove these uh, caps from all the sliders. So they just pop like this. Okay. All this needs to be done before we can remove um, the, the, the top case, right? So now um, let's have a look here. Uh, we have um, a button here for the tuner that is pushing the actual switch here. And this can fall out. So we want to remove it this way and immediately put it upside down. Put on like that. And here we have a piece of plastic that is uh, basically uh, isolating all the LEDs so that each one of them shines uh, the light, uh, directing it, the light to uh, an actual um, a spot on, on the display here, right? Okay, so now let's have a closer look at this. We have four more screws that we need to remove here. Luckily, 
they are uh, sticking to to the uh, screwdriver. They're magnetized. The screwdriver is magnetized. And now we hope to remove this shield, but it is soldered here. So we need to heat up this uh, joint and remove it. So I'm going to uh, to be uh, pulling it as I heat it up. There you go. So now we can have a closer look at this part of the uh, board. So clearly the battery leaked and we need to clean this up. Now, uh, just because we can, because we're equipped, I would like to look at this with the microscope. All right, so we can clearly see that there is a lot of damage. Um, now, some will say the battery acid uh, damaged the circuit board. Uh, this is not really uh, correct uh, because um, the batteries that are used in electronics nowadays are alkaline. So we have to um, remove this corrosion with an acid, which will, which will um, neutralize this uh, corrosion, which is now alkaline. It's the opposite of acid. Now, um, I'm not sure yet if I will use hydrochloric acid or perhaps white vinegar. Um, I believe that either will do the trick. We basically clean up the circuit board and then test it. All right, so um, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to take this guitar outdoor and um, I will use I think hydrochloric acid to neutralize uh, this corrosion and then I have to wash it off with um, uh, water, perhaps a light mixture of uh, baking soda to neutralize the acid so that'll become alkaline again but not, um, not quite such a high pH as it is now. And it's also good to use uh, alcohol to clean it at the end. Um, I will do all this outside and narrate the repair, which we're going to watch here. I do this work outdoors just to make sure I'm not inhaling too many toxic fumes. But before I apply the hydrochloric acid, I want to try to remove as much of this corrosion as possible by mechanical means. Here I'm just using a wire brush. I believe the corrosion is basically shorting out some of the leads on the electronic components, which I believe is why some of the LEDs were blinking, which then causes the battery to drain. I'm also using compressed air to blow away some of the particles especially those that are impossible to reach with the wire brush. So once I'm done with uh, all this cleaning, it's finally time to resort to some real quackery. In other words, I'll just pour some hydrochloric acid all over the circuit board and hope it fixes the problem. It doesn't take much acid. It only takes a little bit which is the same as saying that it doesn't take much, which is what I just said. We just want to dissolve some crystals and be done with it. In fact, that's how Walter White dissolved dead bodies in the Breaking Bad series. I don't know if you watched it. It's a chemical thing.
chemistry. Now let me explain this neutralizing business a little more scientifically. Let's imagine that white paint represents a low pH, which is acidic. And let's imagine that black paint represents a high pH, which is alkaline. When you mix the two together in equal proportions, you should end up with neutral gray, which is neither black nor white. So that's how you neutralize one against the other. So here I'm using a baking soda solution, just some baking soda mixed with water to neutralize the acid that we used uh, for the cleaning. Plain water would just dilute the acid and um, it would wash it away basically by mechanical means. But the surface left behind would still be a little bit acidic. But when we use the baking soda solution, it doesn't actually wash it away. Instead, the mixing of the acid with the baking soda causes a chemical reaction that produces a salt, which is called sodium acetate and water, as well as carbon dioxide, which is a gas, which we see in forms of bubbles. If you look closely, you can actually see some of the bubbles in the puddle of um, liquid at the bottom of the tray. The alkaline solution that leaked from the battery is potassium hydroxide, which is also called lye. And it has a pH of about 13 and a half. The hydrochloric acid that we used has a pH of about one. So after we use the acid to dissolve the corrosion, we neutralize the acid with the baking soda solution, which has a pH of about eight. So since there's a little bit of a acid left um, that's mixing with a baking soda solution, we end up hopefully with a pH of about seven, which is neutral. Before I install the preamp inside the guitar, I'm going to test it on the spot. Just put the battery in and push the button. And there you have it, it lights up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna call this good. Mm. You know, you could buy me a coffee. I mean, if you feel that you've learned something, uh, there are links in the description below. One is to buy me a coffee. Another one is to become a patron. You can click uh, share, subscribe, and like. Please make some comments. Um, I also had to do some work off camera, um, the corrosion damaged parts of the circuit board and I had to repair some of the traces. That took too long. Um, I started recording on video and it, it, it was just taking too long. So I decided not to include it. But um, yeah, um, if you do have a battery leakage, it is possible to fix. And, uh, and that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the show and see you next time.